Hey guys, Zach Marsh here, and this is my review of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay, so this episode is the second half of the Requiem Quietly Place, and, uh, or at least the second half of the two-parter. There's more to it, but, uh, yeah, this episode is it just kind of is interesting, and that's how uh, they finally kind of figure out. They, they finally figure out how the boss, the bo about the boss's multiple per split personality, and, uh, they also find, and they also kind of figure out a bit about how Cherium Requiem actually works. So, uh, so yeah, the episode opens up where the last one was left off, where Bucciardi in Diablo's body has successfully has successfully attacked Chariot Requiem and knocked its hand hand off, holding the, the one specifically holding the arrow, and uh, and, and and of course everybody cheers, pointing out that obviously that means that now they had that now they are able to finally take the arrow, arrow away from Chariot Requiem, but. Uh, then when did, then when uh when Charlie reaches down to actually try and take the arrow, something peculiar happens. Um, he goes to take it, he goes to pick up the arrow, and suddenly Sticky Fingers' hand emerges from his arm and grabs him. And uh, then the rest of Sticky Fingers appears shortly after and tries to attack him. Um, and, and, and this is, and of course everybody be, quickly becomes co becomes confused, wondering why Sticky Fingers is trying to why Sticky Fingers is trying to attack on um, Bucciardi. But uh, but 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 um, Misa in, in Trish's body immediately immediately leaps into action and tries and tries to fire um, um, sex pistols to actually try try and stop up uh, stop the onslaught that's going on. But uh, in the pro but in, in the process, um, one of them, sex pistol number one. Um, goes on to try and attack, tr going to try and attack Mista, and uh, and, and, it, and it's through very quick thinking that uh, that uh, b on uh, b on Trisha's behalf that uh, Mista winds up being winds up being completely fine and completely safe because uh, Mista because Mista because tr Trish winds up turning turning Mista's bullet, it's, it's completely soft, and uh, all all six pistols number one can really do is cl is claw at him and try to kick him, and. Uh, Eventually, and eventually, the uh, for the other sex pistols are able to finally talk him out of it and uh, get him to calm down. And uh, sex pistols number one has no idea what was going on. He had no recollection of actually attacking Mista, which uh, causes which uh, which of course causes everybody to become confused. But uh, in the but in the pro in the process of them actually cleaning coming to clean them up clean up and actually trying to figure out what exactly is going on with uh, Requiem. Um, so Requiem does in fact pick up the arrow again and winds up replacing its hand and continues to wander and continues to walk off. And uh, and of course and of course nobody is fully understands what exactly it is that's going on. But uh, then Polnareff reveals that this might actually be its true ability now that it's gone full now that it's gone berserk. And uh, he then proceeds to explain how he doesn't how he hasn't really. Uh, Uses I mean, he doesn't really use his ability yet, but uh, he seem he points out that it seems to be running on autopilot based on the fact that it's trying to now defend the arrow from any from anybody and anybody who would actually wind up touching it. And uh, he notes that that most likely stems from his last wish as a, as a stand user. That uh, he that the fact that the still that the fact that uh, silver Ch that the fact that silver chariot was turned into chariot requiem with the idea with the idea of of keeping the arrow safe and. Uh, and now, of course, now that that's now that that's actually happened, it's not going to let anybody come come near it, and uh, and, and and surmises that that's why the why, any, why everybody stand is attacking them. At which point, Narancha comes to a very reasonable conclusion that uh, obviously he knew, that he's obviously realized that yes, that that that, that, that might explain why their stands were powered up. Um, they they're now no longer able to defend themselves against their own stands because they're now more a lot more powerful than they can actually reasonably defend against. Um, and, and, and of course, and of course, B Bucciardi, who is who who is who just kind of is new to the whole situation. He eventually reasons that he eventually reasons out who who everybody is by how they're behaving. Um, and, and of course, Polnareff does indeed point out that that seems like Bucciardi is actually picked up on it rather quickly, and then properly introduces himself. And uh, and of course, and of course, Bucciardi does in fact recognize him as the person they were trying to meet. But uh, in case they also he also then proceeds to explain how uh, that how because the char that cherry requiem is also the cause of all of them switching bodies and that uh and of course this is at this point where they actually come to a very reasonable conclusion that uh so for that that because that they that because they now know that Bucciardi is in the boss's body that uh it obviously means that it obviously means that the boss most likely is in Bucciardi's body and uh sure enough Misa has had one of his sex sex pistols number seven keep an eye on it until it move until it moves again so that they can keep an eye on it and make sure he doesn't get up but uh 
But and, and but of course, is at this point where uh, they do they do wonder what exactly it is that they're supposed to do with Cherry Requiem, since obviously it's going to be swapping around everybody's souls when uh, Six Pistols number seven does notably become agitated, and sure enough, as I said, um, Bouchardi's body does in fact get up and starts moving, and uh, and, and and of course everybody starts panicking, but uh, Bouchardi quickly tells tells um, Misa to shoot to shoot it and and take it and take it down. Um, and of course, Misa is very confused because obviously that's Bucciardi's body, but, uh, Giorno, the only one who really knows that, uh, Misa, that, uh, Bucciardi's body is essentially a walking corpse, um, points out, points out that, um, covers it by the fact, by the fact that, uh, Bucciardi was merely wants him to hit something that isn't vital so that the body stops moving and getting up. And, uh, and of course, and of course, after a full, after kind of maybe understanding, um, Misa does in fact shoot, to shoot Bucciardi's body and finally take it down, causing it to... Spasm and convulse, and then shoots it in the and then she and then he shoots it in the legs for good measure. So he, so Bichardi's body is just not able to move. Um, and of course, they, and of course, since they think and of course they then ask Narancia to actually check the radar to actually make sure that everybody is uh, that, that, that there is in fact nobody nearby. But uh, and and Narancia does immediately do that, assessing that uh, obviously he, that that obviously that should be their only enemy, and that if, it, if the boss was indeed the person inside of Bouchardi's body, that's how he should have gone down. And uh, and of course conf does check around to confirm that nobody seems to be waking, that nobody seems to be moving or wait or um, or waking up. Obviously, there are people that are waking up as a result of checking the wreck room, but uh, not anybody that should be close. And uh, and he does point out that that se that it seems like they finally got him. And uh, Thinking and thinking it's all over, he then he then professes that uh, he's very happy. He's very happy about the fact that he can finally maybe now live a normal life. Pointing out that uh, obviously he uh, he openly acknowledges that uh, Abaccio is dead, but uh, also admits that now he feels like he can finally go to school at, at long last. Finally get his own. Finally go to school. Get his own. Get a full education. And overall, just better his life. Overall, he's just determined to actually. Become a bit because just better his life, and also points out that maybe in the pro there's a possibility of him seeing Fugo again. Pointing out that that obviously he feel he obviously he wouldn't mind Fugo calling him dumb if it meant that he could ha he could see Fugo again and have Fugo to tutor him again. And uh, does pro does profess that he's that he's going to eat that he's going to eat good food and 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 it professes that uh, he's going to live he's going to live the life how he wants now instead of being forced to do what the gang wants. Um, and of course, everybody's everybody's happy, but uh, then and but then they come to realize that they need to actually figure out where exactly it is that uh, the goal that goal that uh, that um, cherry requiem is going, and uh, they do and they do come, and they do start talking talking logically, but uh, the, and uh, but of course but of course it's at uh, this point where uh, Misa points uh, points out that they need to make sure that uh, that uh, Bucciardi's body that Bucciardi's body isn't going to get up and uh, continue to incapacitate it and. Uh, and then proceeds to ask Trish to hand him his bullets, pointing out that since they switched bodies, um, Trish is the one that has all of his bullets now, and that uh, they, and that they should be in Mista's shoe. Um, and of course, and and and, and, the, and of course, Mista does indeed pick up the bullets and uh, hand it to him. But uh, then they notice something off, and that uh, and that's and that's uh, obviously they don't they don't know what they don't want to know what's going on. But uh, Misa is very insistent that that uh, that Trish hand him his bullets, but. Uh, then discovers that he's already holding them, and four have somehow landed on the ground. And uh, this causes everybody to panic because they now realize that uh, King that King Crimson has in fact erased time. But which uh, everybody notes is com should be impossible since uh, since they, since they quickly note that he's nowhere that they're nowhere near Bouchardi's body. Um, and they start looking around, and they start looking around, and start look, and start trying to figure out what exactly is going, what exactly is going on. And uh, and Misa actually starts having a bit of a panic attack because he dropped exactly four bullets, which uh, of course, call it, which of course, and of course, is very insistent that me, that uh, Trish drops another one so that it's no longer set of a set of four. And uh, he and he and he just is openly very panicky and very and very and very much no notable about the fact that he can't actually that he can't actually just cope with the number four. Um. But of course, it's at this point where where um where um G where B Bruno actually asks um Narancia to check his, to check his radar and make sure that and make sure that no nothing is going on. But uh, of course, but of course they quick and but of course they quickly find out that there's no response from Narancia. They start looking for him. I mean, even, even though he was literally there a second ago, and then they look around and then they see Giorno's brooch in a puddle of blood. And then they look up to discover that he's actually been wedged in a in a fence post above the above the Colosseum. And uh, 
and quickly discover that that Mista is current that uh, Narancha is currently dead inside Jor inside Joro's body. So uh, they quit and they quit and the rest of the game quickly points out that they need to get him down from there. They need they need to get him down from there, and they're very hysterical about because they they're pretty confident Narancha has died, but uh, they don't want to admit it. So uh, they eventually so, and of course and of course eventually Bruchardi does indeed use sticky fingers to get to get Narancha's body down and. Uh, and, and at, at which point Giorno starts healing up, healing up his wounds and, start, and patching him up, and uh, and of course Misa is very happy about the fact that Narancha seems to be okay. But uh, then Giorno starts speaking through both of his bo both bodies, and uh, and proceeds to explain how uh, it's how his body is currently just an empty shell, and that's uh, and and he starts talking and he starts talking through it. But uh, he, and he know and he notes that he could very easily just slip back inside his body without any sort of problems. But uh, Notes that it notes that he needs to be very that uh, obviously that, and notes that uh, Narancha seems to have already passed on by the time he's able to do that and uh, and sure enough he slips back into his body and then Narancha falls collapses dead on the on the ground and uh, and uh, and of course everybody starts mourning starts mourning his his death pointing out that pointing uh, with everybody being being hysterical about the fact that that Narancha is dead even though they they openly admit it doesn't make any sense how he could have been dead. Um, because he was literally there one second and gone the next, but, uh, and, but, and of course we do also see a little bit of a cutaway from Fugo who sent, who we haven't, who has just kind of apparently just been doing his own thing this entire time, but, uh, he, since he, since he departed the, since he departed Team Bucciardi, he's just been doing his own thing, and apparently he sensed that Narancha was dead because he, he quickly whips, he quickly whips, whips around and looks up at the sky, and uh, it's applied that he knows Narancha has passed on, but and and senses that something isn't quite right. But uh, in any case, after that, Narancha then proceeds to pass on. Um, at which point, at which point, everybody starts lodging out how how exactly it is that Narancha sh is dead in the first place, and uh, and of course, and of course, Pil Polnareff is the first one to offer up a, 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 to offer something up, pointing out that uh, that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Since, uh, as Buchar as Bucciardi quickly points out, King Crimson's range isn't that wide. He should he's only got like maybe two, three meters at most. But uh, and of course, point and of course points out that if anybody that if in order to kill Narancha, he would have to be very nearby. And uh, of course, Trish is actually panicking as well, pointing out that uh, he does that she doesn't know what where the boss is either. Since uh, she's openly admitted she can't sense the boss at all, and notes that it doesn't seem like the boss's energy is coming from Bruchardi's body. So uh, she's very curious as to how exactly it is she's not able to actually sense the boss. But uh, of course, and, and of course, and of course, it's at this point where uh, where uh, where Polnareff starts thinking through 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 all this and points out that. Uh, Obviously, he doesn't fully understand what's going on since there was only one body. Since there's only one body, but uh, he clearly, but clearly there is a, in fact, a, somebody completely different. But uh, he then eventually does, in fact, figure it out and uh, eventually, eventually realizes why he, why he felt like the boss was a duo, but doesn't, but the, the, when the boss shouldn't trust anybody, even and eventually logics out that uh, the boss doesn't indeed have disassociative identity disorder, and. Uh, and then proceed, and then proceeds to explain it to Bucciardi, and proceeds to explain to the group how dissociative identity disorder actually works. About how, when, when, generally how it works is that uh, it's not the one. It's a, it's one of those things where it's like it's a defense mechanism for when, for people who are, whose childhood isn't exactly well a nice one. So uh, essentially, what happens is is somebody is that somebody will be in will leave, be in a really crappy situation. They'll be in a they'll be in a, stuck in a house that doesn't really love them or or somebody or just be in an abusive relationship. And uh, eventually, th and the way dissociative identity sort of works is that it eventually causes their psyche to kind of physically to not not so much split, but uh, kind of but kind of does the um, break apart and. Uh, and that's what causes dissociative identity disorder. They create a personality that is designed to defend the weaker one, and uh, and of course, and eventually it just results in the person being it results in the person just kind of having just being able to switch freely between the two of them sometimes. And, but uh, and, and how and as people get older, they become the the alters then just become more pronounced. And uh, that seems to imply that Diablo came from a bit of a bit of a messed up childhood. I mean. To be fair, he was. We have seen his origin, a little bit of his origin story. He was very much born in a female, in, a, in an old woman's prison, and then raised in a village, not really knowing his real parents. So, uh, so it is, there definitely seems to be an implication that he that he may have had a bit of a crappy childhood, and that's why his dissociative identity disorder flared up. But uh, 
It seems to imply. It seems to. It also. It, it's at this point where Bucciari quickly realizes that uh, that also means that whoever was in the whoever was in Bucciari's body isn't actually the boss. It was Dapio, as it turns out. It's so Dapio is currently in Bucciari's body, dying, while the boss is just MIA and nobody knows where he is. And uh, and of course, Bucciari starts pointing out that they need to figure out where exactly it is he's hiding. But to also point out that they need to that that uh, it seems that it seems like whatever regardless the boss disabled the say took out Narancha because they knew Narancha was their radar they knew they knew that having Narancha would give him an, would give them an advantage so he killed them he killed Narancha to get rid to get rid of him and and, and limit their ability to actually track track Jerry Requiem. Um, but of course and of course they and of course they do but of course they quickly point out that it sh shouldn't have worked. Since obviously, since obviously they don't, they need to figure out they they do have the Cherry Requiem's original stand user and uh, and that they should be able to logic out what exactly it, where exactly it is that Cherry Requiem is going and uh, sure enough, Polarov does in fact point out that uh, maybe the, that the best way to actually find Cherry Requiem would be to just follow the follow the people who are falling asleep. He he openly admits that that would likely be the best way to actually find Cherry Requiem and make sure everything and and try and figure out where it's going and. Uh, Sure enough, they do go in the direction of the people who are currently falling asleep and waking back up, and uh, and they quickly run and they quickly run out of the Coliseum. But uh, but before they but before they leave, um, Giorno kind of sort of gives gives Narancha a proper burial. He sticks them behind a pillar and uh, tells them that he's sorry that they'll have to leave them there. But uh, that, but he also points out that this way that nobody will actually try and hurt him ever again. And uh, and then it concludes that when that once ever, everything's said and done, he will take him home. And uh, then creates a flower bush around Narancha to keep him safe, to keep his body safe, while he while Giorgio and the rest go off to go find um to, to go find Cher at Requiem. But uh, as they're leaving the Coliseum, um, G Trish in Misa's body then sees some, then senses something out of the corner of his uh, uh, of her eye, and does and does in fact see King Crimson, but doesn't fully understand what exactly it is she's seeing, so she just leaves. But uh. It is in fact King Crimson. We do in fact see King Crimson out of the corner, uh, out of the corner of her eye. And we do see her, see King Crimson in the shadows a little bit. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. It's a, that's that's a little bit of an interesting thing. It might be hinting toward where. To re I mean, it's clear, it's clear that something weird is going on. Since obviously nobody knows where the boss is, including Trish, and uh, she's supposed to be able to sense him. But uh, in case they then of it, they do eventually fall, follow through the go through the streets, and making sure to keep a close eye on where, on who's getting close to them. And uh, and sure enough, um, as a as a bit of a joke, as a bit of a sad joke, but not really a joke. Um, remember the criminal I said got swapped into the cop's body. Um, he immediately sees um, Misa and Trish's body, and immediately decide and immediately decides to quote unquote arrest her. Um, at which point Misa, Misa immediately comes to, to the to the aid of Trish's body and uh, not only shoots the guy through the mouth, but also but also handcuffs him through the bullet hole to a to a sign to a uh, signpost uh, and a lamppost and. Uh, and, and and when me and when uh, and when uh, Trish uh, Trish herself actually comes to check on him, and he merely points merely points out that he thought it was Diablo, but it turns out to be just be some cop. And uh, and then they continue on their way. And uh, sure enough, we do see a little bit more of the of the carnage. Um, as it turns out, several of the people who initially weren't able to speak have in fact figured out how to speak in their new bodies. Um, um, the man the man and his dog. The dog is the dog is still making noises inside of the man's body, but the man has figured out how to speak. Um. The woman also has figured out how to communicate through her child's body, and uh, and you know just likewise things like that. And uh, and the and the mom is actually consoling her child, even though the child is currently trapped in her body. But uh, it, and it does kind of wind up being a very interesting visual. But uh, in case they do eventually manage to catch up to to um Cherry Requiem, and uh, they know and and when they look when they actually get closer to it um. Bicharni does in fact note that Cherry Requiem does in fact seem a little bit off. Um, you know that it is in fact that it does seem that it doesn't seem like it really has a destination in mind and uh, is just generally wandering in any any general direction. Um, but also they quickly they quickly look at he quickly takes a look at it and uh, notes that it doesn't even seem to register them as enemies. It's uh, it isn't even trying to attack them. Um, and of course, and of course, Bicharni then then further demonstrates this by actually. Kicking Cherry Requiem down, and it winds up dropping the arrow, and uh, and uh, and does note that it also doesn't seem to be very physically powerful, and is most likely relying on everybody else's stand to do the most of the work, since it doesn't seem like it's physically strong enough to actually defend itself. But uh, 
And of course, and of course, the arrow winds up landing next to next to Giorno, and uh, Giorno decides to do a bit of a bit of a test to see how they're actually supposed to pick up the arrow. And uh, sure enough, he does he does reach for it, but uh, then but then um, Gold Experience winds up emerging from emerging from him and trying to attack him, so he backs off. And uh, at, at which point he picks up a rock and sees it and tries to see if he can attack it, see if he can pick up the arrow that way. But uh, but but when he throws the rock, it winds up boomeranging back at him and almost hits him in the back of the head, and uh, Misa successfully saves him. But uh, it's at this point where Giorno realizes that picking up the arrow is going to be a lot more difficult than they thought, since uh, the way the arrow is works is that it's just is that it, is that it just seems to be to defend the, that regardless of whether or not they reach out to it physically or not, it will just attack anybody any standard user who tries to take the arrow and. Uh, it's so at this point where Polnareff comes up with an idea, an idea and uh, wonders maybe he can it, it wonders if what would happen if a non-stand user picked it up and uh, and of course and of course they put and of course Misa points out that that's impossible since he has no idea how they're going to be able to find somebody to pick it up for them but uh, then then on um, Polnareff in in Coco Jumbo's body then proceeds to grab the arrow in his mouth and uh, it's at this point where Cherry Requiem actually winds up winds up attacking itself and. Uh, and of course, Cher, and of course, it's at this point where Palmer points out that uh, the reason he did it is because he's, he's dead, essentially. He's just piling around Ch Coco Jumbo's body. He's essentially he's essentially a ghost inhabiting inhabiting somebody else's body. So uh, he openly admits that that also means he's no longer a stand user and that he can easily pick it up. And then as Cher Requiem is coming to attack, um, he insists that Mista stick that Mista pierce its, st its stand with the arrow so that they can actually defend themselves. Um. So yeah, so yeah, this episode is interesting. Obviously, first and foremost, Naranja dies, which is very sad and very tragic. And uh, and uh, and man, it, it is just a little bit sad that Naranja was just kind of, just kind of unceremoniously killed off. It just he did, he appears one moment, is killed the next. But uh, it's it's very sad and very tragic. But also, but but it also makes sense. But it also does open up a mystery about how King Crimson actually did it, since obviously. King Crimson has to be, since obviously King Crimson and and Diablo have to be somewhere nearby, and uh, it seems like he's actually stuck in the group somehow, and uh, I'm not entirely sure how the, how he's doing that yet, but uh, it's definitely going to be a bit of a mystery to go into, but uh, and uh, I am interested to see how that is actually going to work, but uh, in any case, for the time being, yeah, that's really all I've got. Narancho dies, which is sad, but uh, also it does open up the possibility that they now realize that uh, that uh, Diablo was in fact a did in fact have disassociative identity disorder, and now they have to find his main personality being Diablo. But uh, wherever he is, I, that's that's the interesting thing. That's where it's wherever he is, he's currently hiding from whoever. But uh, I am interested to see how that's going to go out go. But so uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description below as well. Um, if you want to help support the show, it is in fact the best way to do that. Just go check that out. Um, and be sure to check out my Patreon and the link is. Uh, um, be sure to check out the videos linked in the end screen as well. Um, top video is the most recent one. Whereas the bomb video is based on what you've already seen from me. I have no idea where it's going to send you, so just go check all of those out. And uh, also be sure to check out my tw my tw Twitter down in the description below as well because I mostly post updates over there. So. Uh, yeah, go check those out. Link is down in the description. And, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!